today, but we're also going to be answering any questions that you have. But mm. in order to talk about those questions, Mitch, I think we've got to go over to the man, the myth, the legend, Justin Smith. Look at him smiling at me. I'm really excited that you like saying that. I think you like saying it so much is because it makes me uncomfortable when you say that. <laughs> but thank you very much, Steve. You're very, very kind. Thank you guys for tuning in. Today is all about trucks. Um, we might have talked a little bit about some of the stuff we had coming out for new Raptors and actually a whole bunch of other stuff. It's not limited to just the Fords, but any vehicle, factory, um, on-road, off-road that comes with a OEM equipped box shock. We will have options for here very, very soon. We've already finished most of the setups for all the Raptor options, almost every single one of them. We have uh, one more to go, I think, right, Mitch? A Bronco, right? Yep. So if anybody's got a Raptor Bronco, let us know. We'd love to see it, and uh, we can do all our testing on that and without blowing your truck up. That promise. But since we've got a Raptor right behind us, obviously that's what we're talking about today. So at Shock Therapy, we have new ride improvement systems. Our normal RIS for internal work on shocks, for UTVs, and other things, we have for Raptors as well. We've kind of renamed it though. Now it's a Raptor improvement system. And the Raptor improvement system is exactly what it describes. That is modifying the inside of the shock to get a better ride for where you're gonna need to use it. And if you drive just to the grocery store every day, then we can make the speed bumps go completely away. If you uh, have a hard time parking, then we'll make the curbs go away. Um, <laughs> I have a feeling we might even be able to save some wheels and tires if you have problems getting flats over things like that. The shock work will definitely cure a lot of that as well. But if you're like some of the Raptor owners who take it off-road or maybe go on different tours, we've got a couple of guys uh, that we work with quite a bit. Um, what's the name of the Raptor tours locally? Arizona Raptor Runs. Arizona Raptor Runs. Uh, there's more. There's a ton of stuff that goes down in New Mexico, Canada. Uh, there's... Uh, East Coast stuff, Route 66 stuff, um, a lot out there. So if you take your Raptor off-road, we can actually improve that as well. A lot of people ask, well, I have a Raptor. It already rides amazing. It rides better than any other truck out there, right? It's Some of them have electronics, live systems, all bypass tube setups. Why would I have you guys touch it? It already rides amazing. Well, it's exactly the same thing we tell our UTV owners. As UTVs got better, shock technology got better, and all of a sudden people are getting a hold of a Dynamics or another a live shock system for a UTV. And they started off by buying those and going, well, why do I need yours? It already rides amazing. Well, once we've done the work and made the changes to improve it, every one of those customers comes back going, I wish I did it the second that I bought this vehicle. The same thing is true for the Raptor packages. They come amazing, the tuning is killer, but we can improve that literally by a factor of 200%. It's twice as good as the original ride quality when we get inside and do those modifications. So to tell you a little bit more about that, I'm gonna go back to Steve and Mitch because Steve and Mitch have done the majority <clears throat> of testing on these and have had a chance to, they're probably the best or most equipped to tell you what they ride like beforehand and after. I'll let you start, Steve. For, for first and foremost, um, what I would say is on the Raptor itself. So does it handle and ride great from the factory? Of course it does. It, it is a great handling machine. But once we got done with the tune, it, it felt like when I was out testing with Mitch, it felt like how fast can I now hit that speed bump? I see a bump in the road and I'm not trying to avoid it. I'm trying to see how much harder I can hit that bump. It just seemed to be a little bit more aggressive, better handling, um, all around a better package. But yes, from the factory it rides great, but we got it to ride, like you said, 200% better. So I think, I mean, what you're describing to me is it rode, it rode great, but now that you have this new level of what it can do, you're actually going out and looking for these success stories. Looking for any corner, any off-road little bump that I could touch <coughs> to be able to make it do what it's supposed to do. Badass. Mitch. So to piggyback off that and your statement, I was unaware of what these things are actually capable of. Well, so, so describe how unaware. Um, unaware, hundred percent. So UTVs are obviously known for going through whoops and doing you know 60, 70 miles around really n nasty rough stuff. I was not aware that these trucks, even in a factory form, are pretty capable of doing that. 
Um, after playing with it and doing some modifications to the inside, it only got better and better to where we were driving it faster and harder and it was more comfortable and more enjoyable the faster and harder they drove it knowing that it could actually handle it. So Geyser Loop is a good instance that is pretty gnarly out here. There's some big rock ledges, there's some good G outs, there's a little bit of whoop stuff out there. And to take a truck that weighs five, 6,000 pounds and go through two foot whoops and it be flat and level and feel like nothing's underneath you is even more impressive than what I was already impressed driving at stock. So it is, it is huge, it's a big improvement. It makes a, makes a big difference and to top that off, drive it on the road, feels like you're driving a normal sized car. Doesn't feel like a truck, doesn't drive like a truck. Very nice and smooth, um, takes to the dirt, gets even better. Mitch and I were giggling like little kids when we were going through Geyser Loop because it was impressive at how fast you could hit like a whoop in a stock vehicle, right? I mean, it's, it's a it's an F-150 that you can buy off the showroom floor, obviously a souped up F-150, but it's an F-150 you can buy off the showroom floor and just a little bit of shock work done to it. We were, we were laughing like little kids. It was, <laughs> it was, it was honestly so Next cool. Next time we're going to video that, we're going <laughs> to have to listen to you describe yeah. how it works. Got a great question already. Uh, will you offer an exchange program for the live valve Raptors? We are working on that, yes. Um, we have a ton of parts in stock right now. We're working on getting some shocks to actually make that program happen. Um, obviously don't want people to have their trucks down for a long period of time. Uh, a couple days is even long at that point. So having something where you ship us your shocks, we build the set that we're gonna swap out or exchange, send them right back to you. Um, kind of keep that process going is definitely in the works and we're working on it. So here's why this takes so long to do that. Uh, there's, there's a lot that goes into it. We have to have a classification system in place. We, electronics good? All right. We have to have a classification system in place because we've tried this before with UTVs and typically when someone says that my shocks are basically brand new man, I've only used them once, they show up, rusted out, completely destroyed. Now we're dealing with a set of shocks we've already sent out that were new and getting back junk. We want to make sure that that's um, even and uh, I guess similar parts go both directions. So within that exchange program uh, that we're working on, you'll have the ability on the site to classify the shocks yourself and send in pictures for us to basically back up and uh, choose to what level you're going to get the outside of the shock improved. Because not only do we do the work on the inside, but if you take a look at this one, it's been around a little bit and the top uh, bridge that anodizing is a little bit faded. Well, if you start taking trucks back into the East Coast and they're running around in the snow and you've got salt, then you've got other damage that can happen to the reservoir, damage to the shaft, dam damage to the lower loop. All of those parts we will have in stock and can swap out. We can basically do a brand new set. I mean, that would be the max, right? Your shocks are drunk, you need a brand new set. I don't think that's gonna happen very often. I think it's gonna be like, I'm a level three on the destroyed side. Well, level three is all the external parts and the internal mods and we'll swap that out. That way you don't have your truck down. Another system that we're exploring right now is working with other truck retailers like off -road Warehouse, um, Coral Parts, um, I could name 20 others that are decent uh, chains around the United States where <clears throat> we will set up the shock set prior to you dropping off the truck. We've already classified it, we've built your set. You bring your truck into the truck shop, shocks are waiting for you, they do the swap, we get your shocks back and you're down the road, same day, or you can bring it into the shop. So kind of a combination of things, we're working on all of it. If you have any suggestions, let us know. But well, and even in the meantime of coming up with the swap out program, we have all these parts in stock, so it's still gonna be a same day turnaround. So you're not down for you know two, three, four days without having a truck. If you wanted to bring it to us, drop it off in the morning, you still get to pick it up at the end of the day. Um, any parts that need to be swapped out, we can swap it out and you get to tune and rebuild at the same time. Down for one day, you get it back and you're ready to roll. So. Only thing we're trying to eliminate with the exchange program at a truck shop is states, let's say if somebody's in Maine or Michigan or Oregon and the closest location is gonna be Phoenix or North Carolina for us, we're trying to eliminate two days of shipping So if we get this other program in place, then you can take it there. Shocks have already been shipped and you're already down for the day when you're in the states of the way it's supposed to be. Justin, Justin can, can we, we make a Ram 2500 uh, ride, ride better? better? Can, can we revalve those shocks? Yeah, yeah I mean, which, which shock is on 
your particular one, 2. right? 2.5 elite Fox Shocks, Absolutely. And if you're lucky, uh, uh, local and lucky, <laughs> then uh, uh, Steve will check the truck in, which is always fun, plus. But um, we could even uh, work something out where we're doing some of the testing with you if you want to. We'd love to, uh, we're expanding it as we speak. We already have vehicles that we're working on currently. But since we're talking about what options there are, and for different vehicles, maybe Mitch, you can jump in on some of the things that are here that we have done for, let's say, Raptors. Yeah, so Gen 1 is basically your very first Raptor. Um, it's a non-live valve shock, still an internal bypass. Very, very simple shock, easy to work on, easy to use. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of electronics to this setup here. Uh, they kind of follow that into the Gen 2 side of things. They started out with non-live valves, still an internal bypass shock. Uh, about halfway through, they switched to a Gen 2 live valve, which is what you see right here. Um, updated the electronics on it, gives you that live valve adjustability. You can play with it on the dash. You can change your settings while you're driving it, all of that stuff there. Uh, still a bypass shock. This transition right here, the Gen 2 live valve, when we were testing and tuning it, was obviously a lot better than your Gen 1 just because of the technology and everything that went into it. Um, but still very, very capable of doing basically what, it, what the Gen 1 would do, would do as well. Gen 3, they switched to nothing but live valve, and then they actually changed to a coil in the rear spring versus your leaf. standard leaf spring style setup. Um, this is cool because you can actually play with different spring rates. You can swap things out. You can maybe have a new product that might be coming for this setup We can talk well. about that in a second. Um, but this shock and this truck, the Gen 3s, were by far the best riding truck that we were playing with even out of the box at a factory standpoint, and when we were done with it. That thing was like... Made the biggest difference. <laughs> insane, but how fast and what we could drive that truck through, again, very impressive for being a full-size truck. Let truck. me, I'm <laughs> playing devil's <laughs> advocate right now. Okay, I have a Gen 1, what's the difference, percentage, or, or a scale of one to 10, on my Gen 1 factory versus getting our work on the inside? What would you say that the improvement is? From a Gen 2? A 1? to the work on a, on a Gen 1. I have a Gen 1 and we're gonna do our stuff. What's the jump in improvement? It's a great question. Um, I would say probably 60%. It's huge. It's huge. So if it was a five out of 10, it's a nine. Yeah, the only thing you lack is obviously the live valve stuff. So there's different mm -hmm. technology that you get with that. But from a, a standard style shock mm -hmm. to just tuning it and playing with it and manipulating it a little bit to make it flow and do what it's supposed to, is, is drastic. I, I would say 60% better, and it's on-road and off-road. How about Gen 3? The stock versus the improvement? 90%. Oh, huge. <laughs> like completely new truck. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's insane. That's giggling. It's this was the, the giggling level truck. Yes. of change yes. is giggling level. Yeah, that was the giggling You guys truck. said that. It right. was Justin, when we were going through <laughs> Geyser Loop, I, I couldn't, couldn't stop, stop. <laughs> like barely <laughs> laughing because we would look at something and like I said, it's coming up and we're like, I'm like, there's no, there's no, no way, way this is going to go through it. And it just, you keep, keep, keep the bottle through it and it just goes through. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's insane. And I would say like myself, I wasn't a Raptor hater, but I'm like, why would you buy a Raptor? Like, it doesn't make sense. And after driving one, I get why you buy it. Like, it was awesome. Like, incredible what we could do with it. And honestly, like everybody that we talked to when we tuned all this stuff when we were playing with this were guys who still have UTVs or mm -hmm. maybe got out of UTVs to do the Raptor stuff to still go down to Mexico and do runs down to Mexico or, you know, the local trails around Arizona. And they have a good feeling of what it should do and all that stuff. And, and they know they what were, a good UTV will do. Yeah. And they, they know were, what their truck will do. They were super impressed when they got it back to you. So, <coughs> um, but Gen 3, by far my favorite. Gen 1 was very impressive just with what it did after we were done with it. Gen 2 is cool because you're kind of splitting the difference between those two. And honestly, the Gen 2 is very popular. A lot of people have the Gen 2 live valves, mm -hmm. um, even the non-live valves. But uh, Steve? Mitch, Bronco coming soon? Hopefully, yes. We need a car. We need a truck. Uh, truck well, car. you know what? If, if, <laughs> if you, if you have, have a Bronco, a Bronco and you would like us to be able to make a tune for it, give us a call, 623-217-4959, and we can set you up. Yep. Perfect. Yep. Um, the, does everybody in, in these trucks understand how a bypass works and why it's the one to have when it comes to this kind of stuff? I mean, you get people that are asking you that a lot? Uh, yes and no. We get a lot of people asking like what we're doing to them, like what, we're, <coughs> what the changes are that we're making, mm -hmm. what a bypass tube, I guess, does, yes. But they are aware that it does have that. Okay. So inside the shock, there's a tube, and that resides inside 
This is what you're going to see on the outside, right? Look at me all artistic today. That's pretty yeah, good. I love it. Right? So up here, you're going to have a bump. Can't spell, though. Bump, a couple of ports, maybe even a third. So this tube's inside the shock. As this piston and shaft is coming up through, say, compression, that piston passes one bypass port. Oil is flowing through that freely and gives you kind of really smooth, easy ride. As the piston passes that port, it port is shut off, and now it's stiffer because you've only got three more ports, for instance, flowing oil. The farther the piston goes up, the more ports are covered, the stiffer the system gets progressively until the piston passes that last port, and now this is as stiff as it can get inside this bump stage, basically, because all the oil is forced through the piston instead of around that bypass port. Valving in the piston controls a ton, and the bypass port locations will give you ride quality depending on how you're driving, because what if the truck is a little lower or a little higher, the piston's in a different spot, so positioning of these ports is super important. The diameter of the port, which typically is big to small, so that it is even more progressive from an oil stiffness basis, and also the valving that is on these ports. There is uh, what we call side stacks, and that is also controllable. So a bypass has six or seven different directions you can go that are all tune it in different ways, both in uh, location and also in velocity or how hard you hit it. Uh, question, Justin. Since we're talking about Fox shocks, people want to know, can we do king shocks? Absolutely, we can do king shocks. We, um, we do them routinely. We don't market it very much because sometimes it's hard to get the components very fast and we want to turn it around quick for you guys, so we really concentrate on the stuff that we can do right away. But no matter what you have, even if it's a Elka, an ADS, uh, you can rad flow, name a ton of shocks that can be on these things, we'll do all of them. That's right. That's right. He's like, he's going a little cross-eyed. He's like, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to. But he, yes, we do. Yes, we, yeah, we definitely have the ability to do all of them. We can do them. Um, sometimes it does take a little bit longer to do them mm -hmm. just because of what Justin said, ordering parts and having yes. stuff in stock. So We do have a lot of stuff here, but sometimes when we do have to get it from them, it might take longer than normal. Yep. Steve. Justin, a couple people just wanted to ask, is the North Carolina shop okay after the hurricane? Thanks for asking. Yeah, uh, North Carolina is totally fine. Um, lucky for us, the complex we chose is on high ground, so there's really no issue with that. Now, Walmart, on the other hand, down the street, is a little on the low side. They, maybe not them so much, but everybody's good over there, so thanks for asking. Yep. Yep. Um, on uh, truck stuff, back to setup. Remember, we can dial it in for your needs. So if you're a little bit more off-road and trail, we can set that up for you. If you've got full load or extra weight, tow a boat, we can set it up for you a little bit more on that direction. But speaking of loads and boats. Mm. Before you go there, though, let's say you love the way your truck rides. You don't want to do the valve and you're not interested in it. The rebuild side of it is also very important to pay attention to and keep in the back of your mind. Um, every 30,000 miles, we recommend to service these shocks. Make sure that you are doing that and not trying to go over it. If you go over it, obviously it happens. But we have torn shocks apart that have 80, 90,000 miles on them, and they are shot. They need parts replaced. They need a lot of attention. They might so, have been running with low oil for yeah. 20,000 miles, and yeah. that destroys the internals, yeah. costs you more money. Very important to keep a, keep an open mind on that and make sure that you're staying on top of it. It is uh, it's going to cost you a lot of money down the road if you decide to wait and not take care of it. Uh, the valving is obviously an added upgrade that you can do, but that's going to be kind of your Well, I mean, run. here's another one, too. How about be beyond the like functionality, how about the visual? Because everybody's, you might keep your Raptor perfectly clean and get it detailed every month, but you end up with a shock with faded well, anodizing, or you've got salt damage. You know, if it's somewhere you can see it, I can see that a mile away, I'd be looking at wiping my shocks off every time I clean the thing. When you get the rebuild done, we can do the components and freshen it up, be brand new on the visual side. Yep. So you get both. Yep. Uh, any other questions you have, Steve? No, Justin, but you were talking about loads, and you know how much I love loads. Um, what is the QSE load leveling, Justin? Um, well, good question. So on the board, we've got some new products that are coming out. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that they're two weeks out. They're quite a ways out farther than that. But uh, first, we go, I'll get to your loads in a second, though, Steve. 
<laughs> Thank you, Justin. QSE links. Um, so right here on the bench in front of you, this is a QSE link. What is this, you might ask? Well, interesting enough, this is actually a sway bar link or anti-sway bar link, however you want to look at it, which the Raptors have sway bars front and rear. This is an electronically controlled link that when the on position is a solid link like a, a normal sway bar link and the sway bar would function normally. In the open or off position, this becomes an extendable shock, has no uh, leverage on it, which means the sway bar can move uh, freely, the suspension is completely independent, and the vehicle will act as if the sway bar is disconnected, completely electronic. We have this for UTVs that we're in the middle of finishing wire looms this week so we can sell them next week. And this type of technology is gonna be coming out for all the street trucks as well. So we'll have something available for these and a ton of others very, very soon. Why would you want that? Well, if you're driving around the street, you're pretty much gonna want a sway bar so you don't have any body roll or too much of a tipping issue when you're on asphalt where you have a lot of traction or whipping corners. But in the dirt, you might not like the way the thing rides with just the rear sway bar connected and not the front. Or you might want it the other way around. Um, more independence usually rides better, a little softer. If you're doing some rock crawling or slow trail riding, then you would want to have the sway bars off and have that ride quality badass and nobody's heads kicking side to side because of the sway bar. So QSE is an amazing system and available for UTVs, more models coming and soon for trucks. Back to your load, Steve. Yes, thank you, Justin. So QSE load leveling. Wait, what does QSE stand for, Steve? Quick switch electronic. That sounds like a title and a description from a group of engineers. Yeah, it's a great name, Justin. I, I'm not sure that ever made it through media. <laughs> Certainly didn't make it through our media process. But QSE, basically it's electronic, all right? Next, QSE load leveling. Obviously, still has that E for electronics, right? So load leveling, electronic adjustable system. Now, we have this system just about ready for most of the UTVs. As a matter of fact, here is an example of one. This is an electronic system that replaces the preload collar. So this is a three inch diameter and this becomes what normally would be the preload collar that you would raise or lower thread up and down the shock to tension the spring, raise the truck, raise the car, or take some load off of it and lower the vehicle. This replaces that. Press a button on the inside of the vehicle and this system becomes open. Pressure is allowed to go inside this hydraulic cylinder and this basically pushes the spring up as much as four inches of ride height. And that control is awesome when it comes to UTVs for rock, rock crawling. It's also Pretty awesome if you put it on the back of a Raptor that typically can't carry much weight without having squat to it. Now, that system works on a coilover shock or we're gonna be working on a system that'll allow us to run that underneath the normal coil spring in the back of the Gen 3. I think that is the only option in the Raptor side because we have to use a coil spring for this system, but these are what we're working on in the prototype departments and engineering right now, and they'll be coming on soon. So if you go, you got your Raptor, you just got your shocks done, you go throw a boat on the back of it and the thing's sitting like this, you can press a button, it'll come right back. That's our goal. Steve. Justin, does the QSE replace a airbag setup? No, well, uh, yeah, yes and no. So an airbag system will raise the vehicle, but an airbag only travels so far, like a six inch standard rear bag is gonna go from compressed to extended only about two and a half inches. It's mostly pressure, which will get you more load, but it's not designed to go up and down four or five inches of ride height. Um, a QSC system, and, and don't hold me to this, right? We're working on it. But when it's available, we're looking at about a four to six inch ride height change. And um, we're hoping that that changes the game when it comes to airbag choices. You wouldn't go bag. If, uh, if you could just raise ride height that much because you can go farther than a bag would without gaining all that spring rate that a bag adds. So yes and no, better way to go. Again, Steve. 
Justin, can I order the QSE links online and have it shipped to me, or do I need to bring my razor in? Uh, you guys can answer that. You, we can. I don't think it's on the site yet because we didn't have loom. It's not a site because we don't. It's not a site. It's not a site. It's not a site because we don't have a wire loom in yet. Uh, we don't have the wiring harness in. Uh, once it's on, uh, yeah, it'll be available for purchase online. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have to do an install video, which I think is being worked on currently. So installing that kit would be pretty simple compared to most things that we sell. You're looking at four bolts for the links, or if, you know, for a pair of rears. And the wire loom lays in the center console of most GTVs. It's not hard. As long as you can take the plastics out, you can do it. Um, and you can do four bolts. If you did front and rear, eight bolts, same loom. So super easy. Steve. Two questions. Uh, one more of a statement. People were asking, what do we have the QSE links for? Currently, it is going to be for front and rear of the Pro R, uh, Polaris Pro R. And then they also are going to be having rears for the uh, Can Am X3. Um, the X3 exists. Um, the front of an X3 is a packaging problem that we haven't figured out yet. Because nobody likes a little package. Justin. Exactly. <laughs> Packages are very important. Just ask Steve. Um, also, next in line is going to be Mav R, which has a ton more room in the back. So rear link is going to be right away. A little bit more room in the front, and I'm pretty sure we can package that pretty quick. And we've got um, links in the works for Expedition, Ranger, and 1500, HD 1500. I think they're also working on the XP 1000. Rear, okay. rear going back, back a little bit, and Defender, I heard, but the, um, there's a lot going on. So we're, we're knocking them out as quick as we can, um, and the engineers are working overtime on that one. Second question, Justin. Are we going to make a spring for the Raptors? Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's been in the works. We've, we've been working on it for some time, almost done. So, yes. Uh, when? I'm not telling you two weeks. Uh, another good question about Raptor stuff is if I have bump stops and limit straps mm -hmm. and other springs on it, do I have geyser springs, eye box springs, whatever, mm -hmm. can we still do what we do to Raptors? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, bump stops are cool because you just gain that little bit of extra bump into jumping this thing or landing these things and some mm -hmm. gnarly stuff. Limit straps are always a good idea. Anytime you add a heavier spring rate on it, different wheel and tire, you're going to get more of that extension. When valving it, we do kind of take that into consideration to make sure that it slows it down. But anytime you can add a limit strap, it's going to definitely benefit you and help save a lot of the components that are on these things. But short answer, yes, we can play with it. We can adjust it. We can valve it with aftermarket springs, bump stops, and limit straps. So to your point, Mitch, on the rebound side, inside the shock on this bypass, as the piston travels up and gets past that last port, you get into this bump stage, so it basically stiffens the system up and so you don't bottom the truck out. There is an ability for us to have an extension stop or added rebound in a bypass design. So we're based, what he means by taking that into consideration that you might have a bigger wheel and tire and stiffer spring, we can modify the inside of this tube to give you a, that extension range to slow it down even more than factory and account for that. Steve. Uh, somebody would like to know on that, will they be making a QSE for the Turbo R? And I would say yes, it is just not in the works as of right now. I, you or know, it's in the works, it's but it's, in just, the work. it's not, it's not going to be coming out as soon as we have the Pro-R and the Can-Ams. Uh, it's the same as a Can-Am. Is it going to be the same as Can-Am? Yep. Okay. So mm -hmm. Like when we do the Mavar. Yeah, it yep. should be. Yeah. Very soon. Yep. Um, I lost it. I had one good question for you when you were asking that, but now I, I lost it. So I got one. What do you got, man? Uh, what's the turnaround time for installs at Glamis, springs and shock rebuild? Smart shocks. Mm. Steve. Mm -hmm. I can answer that for you, Mitchie. The <laughs> same day. Mm -hmm. uh, depending on, so as far as when you call in and you make an appointment, if your appointment's on a Monday, let's just say for instance, uh, it is first come, first serve for appointment. So if you are there first in the morning, your car is going to be one of the first four pulled onto the slab. Um, and it's typically from the time it gets pulled onto the slab to what it gets pulled off, I'd say about two hours. Yep. Give, give or take. Give or take two hours. How do yep. they make an appointment, Steve? Oh, Mitch, I'm glad you asked that. You should just <laughs> call in 623-217-4959 and call in and request an appointment. We are also still booking. We have a few appointments left for Glamis Halloween, Camp Razor. Um, I wouldn't wait any longer on that, you guys. The Glamis is coming, and, I mean, give it the rest of this week, maybe the beginning of next, and they're going to be booked out. So um, call us right away. Get on the schedule. Make sure you're going to be able to get it done. Yeah, that stuff goes faster than you think from a booking standpoint. Steve. Justin, when are we going to have body sleeves? 
But the question wasn't as aggressive as that, but it seemed that was, like that was It sounded a little bit angry. Sounded, that was very aggressive. He asked more aggressive than what I did. But, I um, almost was going into, like, <laughs> body shaming sleeve jokes, but I <laughs> left that. Your anger kept me from doing that. You're welcome. Um, so, body sleeves, if you guys don't know, I don't have any samples to show you, but we've got stainless, well, basically a steel sleeve on the outside of the shock body to stop wear from dirt and bad dividers and stock springs and all that good stuff. Um, all we're doing right now is waiting for some components and uh, we're a couple weeks out. A lot of the components are, uh, like say a body sleeve, you know, we're not looking at doing uh, 10 of these. We're looking at doing thousands of these. So we've got easily 50,000 feet of material that's being cut right now. As soon as it's all done, then we'll have it. All the crossover rings, uh, CNC shops already pounded those out, so coming pretty quick. So I don't know, Mitch, three, four weeks? I was going to say, uh, probably, probably the tail end of four weeks if we're being realistic. Will yeah. we have them by Camp Razor? That is the goal. Uh, do not hold me mm. to it. I, I would love to have them there for sure, yeah. uh, just because we want to sell them just as much as you want <laughs> to buy them. Yeah. Um, but we are kind of waiting for everything. Just waiting on show. parts, man. So. That's it. All the design and testing has been done over yep. the last couple of years. Just waiting on some parts. Uh, yeah. Another, can you do a 2024 Bronco with Fox shocks? If you bring me the truck, I will do it. There it is. Call me. You heard it from Mitch. Yep. Mm -hmm. Steve? Justin, this question has now been asked six times by a <laughs> Ryan Bartlett. He wants to know, will Upfit be partnering with other brands such as Yamaha, Honda, and Kazawaki? Thank you for asking that question six times. The answer is yes. So we, as Upfit, started with Polaris because of relationships we had with Polaris. But we also started in talks with BRP. We have, um, we're, we're actually today um, finishing some of the communications with Kawasaki. Uh, we haven't talked to Yamaha yet. Uh, if they give us a call, we'll definitely entertain that. But we will be expanding to other manufacturers. Um, Upfit is going really well. And a lot of people are just now starting to realize that they can go to a dealership and buy a brand new vehicle with all a perfect package for desert perfect package for partying in a, in a ranger or you know playing around on the ranch and we've got a ton of stuff coming right now the sand edition which is a dsr is in the dunes for the next four days doing a lot of video and promotional work including i heard that they're running one of the new fft trucks out there which is the 800 horsepower chevy with paddle tires doing rips across the bowls right now so Pretty cool videos will be coming out of that, but if you guys are in Glam, stop out and mess with them. Dom's out there. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you said everyone wants a nice package, and Justin, that's what Upfit is. It's a nice package that you can receive. You and your packages. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. I appreciate all of the things you do, Steve. All of your packages and a nice little... I'm a nice big package that needs <laughs> some body sleeves. So, um, yeah, <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that one. So, on the board, we don't have anything else listed. We can get out of here. If you guys have any more questions, send it. Um, Steve, last one, then we're done. Last one. Uh, well, I got two, Justin, and that's just how I roll. Mm -hmm. uh, Chapo Racing said, I've had experience with Raptor Shocks and you guys. Getting them worked on after 80,000 miles, just wow. Awesome. Thanks, Chapo. Thank, Thank you. you. And then uh, one last question from Ryan Van Valkenburg. He said, can you purchase these shocks for a regular F-150 and then valve them? Ooh, that's a really good question. I don't know the answer to that. I'm pretty sure that they bolt right up except for the electronics, right, Mitch? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's basically, Jen, there, there's some, a couple differences, but uh, getting shocks, yes, we can definitely get shocks and we can put it back. Oh, so your, your answer to the I question believe is, is what he was, yeah. we can get you brand new sets of any of these models yeah. and you can put them on. As long as that's what he's asking. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But right. Now, yes. electronics-wise, yes. you wouldn't be able to do that because you've got sensors in the vehicle and stuff that aren't going to respond, but you could do a non-live. Right. Hopefully that answers your question, Ryan. Ryan, Hopefully thank you. Ryan. Chapo, thank you. Last two questions. I think it's time, which means we got to get out of here and get some work done. You guys, thank you very much for tuning in. Hopefully we answered some of your questions on the truck stuff. We'll edit this down, put it on YouTube, tell a friend with a Raptor to go check it out. Hopefully it answers some of their questions, and maybe they'd like to get their shock serviced and improved so the ride quality is just badass. Steve, I think you can probably... Guys, if you're looking to get any truck services, please call 623-217-4959, or if you'd like to purchase anything that we've talked about, visit www.shocktherapy.com.